Praise the Lord. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this moment. Thank you for bringing us together to impart, to reveal, and to give us the proper knowledge of the situation of the world around us. We're asking, Lord, that your word will be real to everyone in Jesus' name. And the power, the fire, the zeal, the compassion that ought to come to our hearts as a result of hearing your direct words. I pray all those virtues will enter into every life in Jesus' name. Help us not to be hearers only, hearing but not acting, hearing but not understanding, hearing but not acting on your word. We pray, Lord, will be active, obedient, passionate, compassionate hearers in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tonight, as we come to the workers' training session, we're looking at the words of Jesus Christ. And these words carry weight and they're very important. When you hear information, when you hear an instruction, when the revelation comes to you, if the revelation actually penetrates your heart, it gives some motion, emotion, passion, compassion, reality, and zeal. It sets you moving. If you really understand what revelation the Lord is giving you, and the revelation the Lord gives tonight from Matthew chapter 9, verse 36 through to verse 38, demands action, demands zeal, demands that we have the propelling fire inside us that will really reveal and understand those are the words of Christ and we're pleased to Christ. We understand him and we're moving according to the word he has spoken. Please open your Bible with me. Matthew chapter 9, verse 36. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them. Connect those two words. He saw and then he was moved with compassion. When you see an accident and you see the people who are dying and they are bleeding and you see blood gushing out of them and they are crying and they know that life is getting out of them. You see that, you hear their cries, it will move you, move you to tears, move you to concern move you to action you will want to do something and that's why jesus when he saw all the multitude he was moved with compassion with them because they fainted and they were scattered abroad a sheep having no shepherd as jesus saw that and he felt their condition he shared that concern and that compassion with the people around his own disciples. Look at verse 37. Then said he unto his disciples, When you are concerned about something, and when you have seen the reality of the situation around, if you really have understanding of that situation, you will talk about it. You will share that information. You will pass the information across to people who have the ability to join hands with you and to help. 
That's why he now said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. He wasn't talking about the harvest within the local assembly. He wasn't talking about the harvest within the people who are already saved and they are harvested into the kingdom. We must be very careful when we read the words of Christ. We don't turn everything around and then misinterpret that word of Christ. It was talking about sinners perishing. It was talking about sheep without shepherd. It wasn't talking about those who are already saved, those who are in the church, those who are in the assembly. It wasn't talking about looking for more ushers and looking for more members of the choir and looking for more people within the local assembly or the large assembly. It wasn't looking for people to reorganize the sheep that are already in the fold. It was talking about sinners outside. That we're fainting that we need to have compassion we need to have zeal and we need to have a drive and leave the comfort of the assembly the comfort of the local church and look straight on the field and see because the harvest truly is plenteous but the laborers are few in verse 38 he then said there is something to do if you have got the revelation, if you have got the instruction, if you have got the knowledge of what Christ is revealing, and you feel it in your heart, and you sense it in your soul, and you have fire burning within you, and you know something must be done, and what is to be done is beyond you. It's not one, it's not something that only one soul winner can do. Only one evangelist can call, can, they, can call out or can accomplish. It's not something that just one preacher can say, I can do it all. Then he gave the challenge to them. Pray ye therefore. Therefore means because the harvest is plenteous, because the sinners are many, because the unevangelized, the unchurched people are many in their millions and billions beyond the number of the people within the church. Because of that, pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest. It's not talking about the Lord of the church now. It's not talking about the father of the children, the father of the believers. It's saying that Christ gave himself. He came for the whole world. And the world, the harvest, the field, they are not saved yet. And God is not willing that any should perish. <clears throat> And because of that, he wants the harvest in the world, he wants the sinners in the world to hear the gospel. That's why he said, pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth, that he will send forth, that he will help. If it is to be work in the church, he doesn't need to send forth. We're all here. He just needs to put you there and put you there. Once again, I want to remind you. Because, you see, if we read the Bible and misunderstand, we mislead people. It's not talking about sending forth choir members so that we can have the good choir members it's not talking about sending forth ushers it's not talking about sending forth workers in the church it's not talking about full-time workers in the church it's talking about the people who are dying outside and the people who are fainting and he said pray ye therefore the lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest that's what we're looking at today and the message is the compelling compassion of christ-like christians christians who have the might of christ 
Christians who have the revelation from Christ and Christians who share the very heart and the very might of Christ not wanting the fainting sheep to perish compelling compassion a kind of compassion that drives you a kind of compassion that compels you a kind of compassion that gets you out of your comfort zone and then you are going on the harvest field you want to be a pliable a submissive a flexible a surrendered a vestal soul winner in the hands of the lord as we pray that the lord will send you forth get you out of where you are and get you out of what you are doing and go to the harvest field and bring souls into the kingdom there are three things we're looking at as we look at the message today number one the multitude of sheep having no shepherd that's what jesus said number two the mystery the suffering the agony of shepherds having no sheep as there are sheep having no shepherds we need to understand the bible reveals there are shepherds having no sheep they call themselves shepherds they are appointed as shepherds they answer the title shepherd and but they have no sheep they are laboring perhaps or maybe they are sleeping they're not doing anything they do not have any soul they have won into the kingdom there are shepherds like that they, they may be shepherds over the sheep that other people have won unto the lord and they just keep them there and they're overseeing them it's like when you look at the disciples of jesus christ already he attracted and he called 12 disciples already you understand that jesus had 120 disciples that were in the upper room now if peter will rise up and be a leader and be a shepherd and be an overseer over those 120 on the day of pentecost if he doesn't if he did not add any other soul he'll be a shepherd with no sheep there's nobody that has come to the lord born again through him but we understand that peter when he rose up to preach and he declared the word three thousand souls came into the kingdom that's what the lord is saying that's what the lord is saying he wants uh, workers he wants leaders he wants preachers he wants evangelists that will go into the field and then bring sinners into the kingdom but there are shepherds with no sheep at all number three is the mandate of the shepherd to his servants we are servants of God and the Lord is saying, I have a mandate for you. I have a work for you. I have a commission for you. And he wants us to pray, to be so submissive to the Lord that if the call of God comes to us and he thrusts us out, we will go where he has sent us and we will do the work and bring to sinners and bring them into the kingdom let's come to point number one the multitude of sheep having no shepherd we're coming to matthew chapter 9 verse 36 it says and when but when he saw the multitudes he was moved with compassion he was moved with compassion what do you see that moves you if you're all the time on the internet and you're surfing the internet and looking at this and looking at it, do you are you ever moved do you come out do you shut down that internet do you shut down all the social media that is becoming like a habit and you, you glue your mind and you glue your heart on that come out of your house come away from that screen and see people who are moving about aimlessly people who are dying and people who are perishing 
don't disconnect with people just because you're glued to your uh, whatever is in your hand Jesus saw the multitude he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and they were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd look at three things about this number one the condition of fainting sheep scattered abroad that's what jesus said about them and he knew them and he knows that the same situation is still there today that's the condition of fainting a scattered sheep all abroad number two is the confusion of fearful sinners suffering all around all around us there are people they're fearful because they don't know what will happen tomorrow they're faithful because they don't know what will happen in the night they're faithful because they, they're confused about life everything they have done has not linked them has not connected them with god there is no salvation there is no peace of mind there is no joy there is no certainty that if they died today they will go to heaven they don't know where they're going to spend eternity the confusion of fearful sinners suffering all around now number three is concern that is the concern of Christ is concerned for falling souls seemingly abandoned seemingly abandoned it's like the uh, Pharisees they are not thinking about the souls of the people the Sadducees were not thinking about the souls of the people and all the religious leaders and preachers were not thinking about the souls of the people and so they were seemingly abandoned and Jesus had concern for those falling souls and many souls today that are falling many souls today that do not have Christ as their personal savior although Jesus died for them more than 2,000 years ago yet many people have not heard and the Lord is concerned about them once again I need to emphasize the emphasis of leaders in the church pastors in the church overseers in the church should not be over about less than one percent of the population that is inside the church and they were so concerned about the less than one percent in the church and the more than 99 percent in the world that have not known the lord were not concerned about them christ had concern he is concerned for falling souls seemingly abandoned we're looking at number one there and it is the condition of fainting sheep scattered all abroad in jeremiah chapter 50 verse 6 jeremiah chapter 6 chapter 50 what he didn't hear from verse 6 my people have been lost sheep my people in the sense that he had covenant with them my people in the sense that they had the old covenant the old uh, testament they could have been saved but their prophets did not show them the way of salvation their priests did not show them the way of salvation they became religious without understanding the conversion the connection they ought to have with the lord my people have been lost sheep their shepherds have caused them to go astray their shepherds have led them to go astray their shepherds have disconnected them from the heavenly father their shepherds have disconnected them from the savior and from the lord that can only the only one that can take them to heaven their shepherds have caused them to go astray they have turned them away on the mountains they have gone from mountain to hill they have forgotten their resting place 
they might go to church they might go to a synagogue they might go to religious assembly they might come to deeper life but the people that leave them they look at the outward conformity of their dressing of their appearance to a particular presentation their hearts are far from the lord and they are not showing them what it means to repent what it means to believe on the lord and what it means to have that conviction in the heart the spirit of god bearing witness that this is a child of god they do not have the time to seek the lord to pray to the lord and to have a well-grounded relationship with the lord and their shepherds love to have that so the shepherds pile on them quite a lot of things do this do this do that without checking up are you born again are you saved have you repented can you tell me the testimony of the change that came in your life when you gave your life to the lord do you have the understanding and the feeling that you are rightly related with the lord if you died today are you sure beyond any shadow of doubt no guilt no condemnation no unresolved problem or resolved thing in your heart if you die today suddenly are you sure you will go to heaven the shepherds were no more concerned about that and the people did now go from mountain to the hill and they are forgotten their resting place look at zechariah chapter 10 verse 2 in zechariah chapter 10 looking at verse 2 it says for the idols have spoken vanity and the diviners have seen a lie and they have told false dreams they comfort in vain therefore they went their way as a flock that were troubled because there was no shepherd it's like you know there's no shepherd the schools are there the students are there but there's no teacher and the people are there but there's no one there's no servant to serve them the real bread of life and the real water of life they have a name that they need the denominations are multiplying the local churches assemblies are multiplying but the word of salvation is cursed among the people they do not have the message of life they should have had that will make that to drive them on their knees make them repent and make them believe on the lord jesus christ that's their condition number two is their confusion the confusion of fearful sinners suffering all around the confusion of fearful sinners suffering all around in second chronicles chapter 15 we're looking at verse 3 second chronicles chapter 15 reading from verse 3 now by long season israel had been without the true god can you imagine that Israel had been without the true God. God owned those people before. Let my people go. Those people also promised the Lord everything the Lord had said, we will do and be obedient. But years have passed. The first generation of the people that had the word of God directly, all those, the, that first generation has gone. And Joshua that came and made the people to remember the word of God, Joshua is gone. All the elders that outlived Joshua, they were gone. By the time you come to the time of the kings, it says, for a long time now, Israel had been without the true God. Solomon was the king over them. Solomon had wisdom. 
he didn't apply his wisdom to teaching the nation the word of god until his son took over and it was to be like that's my son he must be the king that's my son he must be the pastor that's my son he must be the overseer that's my son he must be the one that's in charge whether that son has the will whether that son has the ability to connect the people with god and to make the people serve god or not no 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 it's become a family scene and so now all those kings for a long time that had led the children of israel they made them to be without god for a long time Israel had been without the true God and without a teaching priest. Teaching had gone out from Israel. There was still religion. There's a big um, Solomon's uh, temple, an ornate, decorated, having gold and having everything. The costliest temple that Israel ever had and the most beautiful temple in the whole world but temple without teaching but sanctuary church building without the true god that was the situation of the children of israel by the time jesus came disciples showed him and they said look at this temple nothing like this nothing as costly as this in any nation look at what Herod had built for the children of Israel and Jesus said that one excites you that one interests you none of these souls will stand on one another because the people were in their fallen state they didn't have any connection with the Lord. That's the reason why we need to make ourselves understand the words of Christ and not just say, we have this church, we have this church, we have this church. It's not the building. When the rapture will take place, the Lord is not going to rapture a church building. He's going to rapture people who are saved, people who are holy, and people who are sanctified, and people who are ready for the coming of the Lord. For the case of the children of Israel, they were without a teaching praise and without law. Now understand the Ten Commandments were written on the tables of stone, and they were still in the Ark of the Covenant. The thing was there, but who is reading it? The Bible is there. Who is reading it? The word of God is there. Who is interpreting it? And that was the condition of those fearful sinners. They had to be fearful because their consciences told them they were not right with God. In Isaiah chapter 33, Isaiah chapter 33 and we're reading from verse 14 it tells us the sinners in zion think about that zion that's the city of god zion that's the place where god ought to be reigning zion that's where the glory of god ought to be visible but there were sinners in zion you see, the Lord is not, is not concerned about the mountain Zion, about the physical structure on Zion. He is concerned about the people. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness has surprised the hypocrites. As you look at many people today who might be in a church environment, hypocrisy lip service eye service has taken over their lives they do things and they say things and they act in ways that 
there's no reality to what they're doing there's no sincerity to what they're doing they might claim they belong to zion they belong to the mountain of the lord they belong to the sanctuary of the lord they belong to the place where god has established his honor and glory they are citizens of zion but there are sinners in zion and their shepherds are not telling them the shepherds just want to talk to them and make them feel we're part of zion the sinners in zion are afraid fearfulness has surprised the hypocrites who are among us shall dwell with devouring fire who among us shall dwell with everlasting bodies although we have been in zion although we visit zion although we live in zion although we claim that we are high we're deep we're broad although we claim we belong to the lord are we born again sinners are they still in zion backsliders are they still in zion that's the concern we ought to have and then we need to have this compassion of christ and reach out to them and be very clear about the sins those sinners are committing even though they belong to a well-known church it tells us in verse 15 in verse 15 he that walketh uprightly he that speaketh uprightly he that despises the gain of oppression stop there for a moment do we are we so sage are we so born again we despise the gain of oppression then that's a problem you see there are many church goers and the church goers of today call them any church gospel church call them evangelical church call them pentecostal church Call them deep alive church give them any title the lord is looking for people that will despise the gain of oppression if somebody give you money the member of deep alive let's look away from the outside people somebody give you money but you know that his money is not clean blood money or the money is coming from oppressing other people stealing from other people stealing from the government maybe they are investigating such people even at present and you know but you need money and the fellow says well i know that you can't do the kind of work i do you can't go to the places i go but you know i pity your condition i give you money you have the conviction to say no to reject such amount of money there are people who claim they are in zion that is they are in the church of the living god and yet they cannot despise the gain of oppression that shaketh his hands from beholding from holding bribe if somebody give you bribe do you try to rationalize and say well he's uh, grateful for the work i did for him uh-huh do you rationalize and say well god sent this to me and god has a way of blessing his people in different ways i may not be able to tell they're not a christian you're looking for money money is more than the word of god money is more than the teaching of the word of god you talk about holiness by the word of mouth when it comes to something practical you cannot take a stand and say i'm not going to hold bribes in any way you're not a believer that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil 
shut off his eyes from seeing evil. You see, those are people that are going to get to heaven. But the people who love oppression, the people who benefit and gain from oppression, your son is not uh, doing clean work. You know that your son is in a gang, but your son is bringing money. Mommy, I appreciate you have this, and you never ask my son, what work are you doing? How did you get this amount of money? Your husband brings money, and then you're living like a king when the fellow does not have a regular work. Now, you are not asking, you know, and then you say, we're coming to church, you are a sinner in Zion. You love bribes. You love the gain of oppression. You do not stop your ear from hearing a blood. And you do not shut your eyes from seeing evil. That's the condition. If a people, if some people in deeper life, Bible church in this church can be like that. How about the people outside? How about the people that are not hear, even hearing what we're hearing? That's why Jesus had concern for the people because number one of their condition, because number two, their confusion. Number three now is the concern. His concern for falling souls seemingly abandoned. His concern for falling souls seemingly abandoned we're looking at ezekiel chapter 3 verse 17 ezekiel chapter 3 we're reading from verse 17 son of man i have made thee a watchman over the house of israel that word house means over the nation of israel and the Lord is, uh, when the Lord looked at the multitude, he was looking at the multitude outside the confine of his own disciples. We'll say this way, he was looking outside the territory of the local church. He was looking outside the people that already believed. And when he saw that multitude outside, that is multitudes in the nation not yet in the church then he had compassion on them he was moved with compassion once again i've said this for years i need to repeat it again if you are only a member of the choir in the church and you are not reaching out to souls outside and to get them saved if all you do is that you wait for us to collect the people together and then you're only singing the lord does not appreciate that you don't find that in the new testament and then if you're only saying i'm an usher in the church and you are not touching souls outside reaching to them outside we don't have that in the new testament you know philip that was chosen to serve food and Stephen chosen to serve food in Acts of the Apostles. There were people that were concerned for sinners outside. They reached out to those sinners and Philip went down to Samaria and he preached Jesus unto them. And then many people were healed and they were delivered and evil spirits came out of many and they repented and they were baptized as a result of the ministry of Philip in Samaria. Not the ministry of Philip is only distributing bread. I may walk already, and that's enough. That's all I will do. He has given us a work to reach out. He's concerned for the people who are perishing outside, and we need to have the same concern. Deeper life must not become a denomination like all the others that only the tradition of uh, churchianity is what we carry out. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. 
Therefore, hear the watch at my mouth and give them warning for me. In verse 18, in verse 18, it tells us, When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning. I'm singing, I cannot give sinners warning. I'm an usher. I cannot give sinners warning. I'm a full-time worker in the local church. I cannot give sinners warning. You're not evangelizing. You don't have the concern of Christ, the mind of Christ, and the zeal of Christ that he wants sinners to be saved. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked from the wicked way from his wicked way to save his life the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity but his blood will I require at thine hand his blood will I require at thine hand it tells us in verse 19 it says yet if thou warn the wicked after the church service you've uh, done your singing you've done your ushering you've done everything within those uh, three four hours in the church in the assembly you've done what you need to do you are now going out in the bus there is the opportunity to declare the word of God to the sinners in your community there is opportunity to declare the word to the sinners and as you interact with them in your office all those hours of the week all those days of the week if you warn the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness nor from his wicked way he shall die in his iniquity but thou hast delivered thy soul look at verse 20 in verse 20 again when a righteous man does turn from his righteousness now as we are in the church members of the church if they backslide members of the church if they go to join some gangs they become occultic or they become like they are working with powers of darkness members of the church they begin to steal and you know them and you see them and they are part of your little group there and you see we are workers together this is our section and you see that man backsliding and you see that woman backsliding and you just leave it like that because you know we don't have enough workers in this section if we do anything about this if we challenge him and we tell him you're a backslider if he does not work again we even need more workers here you don't need more workers there where we need workers is outside the people who are dying and perishing again when a righteous man does turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity and i lay a stumbling block before him he shall die he shall die that backslider if he dies in that condition he will die forever he will not get to heaven he shall die because thou hast not given him one in he shall die in his sin and his righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered but his blood will I require at thine hand. His blood will I require at thine hand. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, nevertheless, if thou want the righteous man that the righteous sin not preachers, pastors, local district pastors, group pastors, overseers, warn the members of the church preach to the members of the church that the righteous sin not we're not uh, on the pulpit to encourage people how to get more money how to succeed how to have this how to have that what shall you profit the members of the church if they gain the whole world and lose their soul let us preach in such a way 
that sinners will be convicted. Let us preach in such a way that sinners who are convicted will go on their knees and repent. And if they need to make restitution, let us remind them of the word of God and let's show them how to have the grace of God and to make their restitution. Let us preach in such a way that a believer will be steadfast and will remain in that holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Nevertheless, if that one, the righteous man, that the righteous sin not, and he does not sin, he shall surely live because he is one. Also, thou hast delivered thy soul. I pray God will help us to remain in the conviction of a true shepherd in Jesus' name. I need a better amen. amen. Point number two now, the misery of shepherds having no sheep. We're coming back to Matthew chapter 9 and we're reading from verse 36. Matthew chapter 9 verse 36. But when he Christ saw the multitudes now, if we have the mind of Christ, we'll have the sight of Christ. We'll see like he saw. We'll feel like he felt. Our heart will be moved like his heart was moved. But if we see what Christ saw, and we do not have the same feeling, the same passion, the same kind of heart, how do we say we belong to Christ? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. When he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and because they were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Now we're seeing a sheep having no shepherd. How about the shepherds having no sheep? How? Number one, the cruelty of angry shepherds scattering the sheep. The cruelty of angry shepherds scattering the sheep. It says because they were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. I'm sure you've seen fathers in their own houses that are so cruel that are so brutal they scatter their own families i'm sure you've seen employers bosses in the place of work by their cruel nature by their utterances by their lifestyle that scatter their employees i'm sure you found schools that the proprietor or the principal will act in such a way that the students, the pupils, will be telling their parents, I don't like this school. They're cruel, they're bitter, they're brutal. The way they treat us is like they just want to make us slaves. And children keep going out of such schools. So in the same way, there are shepherds that are so cruel, they are more conscious of their position. They are more conscious of their authority. They are more conscious of who they are. And they want the sheep to fear them more than the sheep will fear the chief shepherd, the Savior, the Lord. And so there are those shepherds. They'll be miserable at the end because of their cruelty. And look at Ezekiel chapter 34, and we're looking at verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, verse 2, 
It says in verse 2, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel and prophesy and say unto them, Thus says the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel, calamity, suffering, punishment, condemnation, damnation be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Look at verse 3. He says, Ye eat the fat, and ye clothe you with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. Ye feed not the flock. Ye feed not the flock. Shepherds that ought to feed the flock, ye feed not the flock. Look at verse 4. It says in verse 4, The disease have ye not strengthened, neither have ye, have ye healed that which was sick, neither have ye bound up that which was broken, neither have ye brought again that which was driven away, neither have ye sought that which was lost. Look at the last line, and as you read the last line, check up your own attitude, check up your own disposition, Check up your own action to members of the church, to the sheep that was handed over to you. As you read that last line, check up your own feeling and your own action and your own method of leadership. It says, but with force and with cruelty have you ruled them. Do the members of the church complain under your leadership? The man is cruel, is thoughtless, is oppressive, is so forceful. I see him like this, and my heart begins to uh, palpitate. I'm not at rest. We're restless when we see him because that shepherd is cruel. Have you found out some members of a local district that rather go and worship in another district? I don't want to live deeper life. I'm still a member of deeper life. But if I want to get to heaven, I cannot stay under this uh, local pastor. He always wants everybody to bend and to bow and he crushes everyone. And he even tells us, if you don't obey me, no matter what kind of salvation you have, no matter what sanctification you have, me here, yeah? if you don't obey me, you will die and go to hell. He's higher than Christ. He's greater than Christ. And he wants to kind of totally destroy the work of Christ on the cross of Calvary. He's so proud. He's so self-centered. He's so filled with himself. He wants slaves. He wants to make slaves of the sheep in the church. And he's scattering the church. Look at Genesis chapter 49. We're looking at verse 5. In Genesis chapter 49, we're reading from verse 5, Simon, Simeon, and Levi are brethren. They are instruments of cruelty and are in their habitations. Instruments of cruelty, they did not think that those people, they deceived and made to be circumcised, and then they took the sword and killed them. They did not think of their eternal destiny. Are there shepherds like that with cruel with cruelty they drive and with cruelty they oppress and suppress look at verse 6 in verse 6 it says oh my soul come not thou into their secret unto their assembly mine honor be not thou united for in their anger they slew a man in their self-will, they dig down a wall. Look at verse 7. 
in verse 7 caused be their anger you find preachers pastors they are angry over the pulpit we set this goal we need this money we want to have this and you people we prayed for you you had that job we prayed for you you have the money and now we see the work in our district has this need has that need and nothing is being done and it begins to cost them the man is angry he thinks about their money more than about their soul and those who do that they are shepherds that will not have the confidence of the trust of the agreement of the fellowship of the, uh, the the stability of any sheep cause said be their anger for it was fierce and their wrath for it was cruel i will divide them in, J in jacob i will scatter them in israel let's come to number two there in number two here yeah, the cowardice of absent shepherds stabbing the sheep there are some shepherds not they are not cruel but they have such in nature that any time the wind is blowing around their community, they run away, they're cowards, and they leave the sheep there. Whatever is happening, we cannot bear that, we cannot, we cannot stand that. And because of their cowardice, they're absent. And the sheep is starving. And the sheep are starving. It tells us in uh, First Kings chapter 20, but reading from verse 39. First Kings chapter 20, verse 39. And as the king passed by, he cried unto the king, and he said, Thy servant went out into the midst of the battle, and behold, a man turned aside and brought a man unto me and said, keep this man just one man in the own case maybe keep these sheep 20 of them keep the sheep 200 of them keep the sheep 500 of them in your own state how many sheep are there keep these sheep maybe 5,000 of them and then it says if by any means he is missing if by any means all the sheep will be missing when we get to the other side then shall thy life be for his life or else thou shalt pay a talent of silver verse 46 and uh, as thy servant was busy here and there as the shepherd was busy here and there as the leader as the teacher of the word was busy here and there as the shepherd got involved with this and this and this is a man of many uh, of many uh, traits a man of many um, of many things that he does busy here and busy there is always late for the uh, meeting and whether the members are there or not he doesn't know as thy servants are busy here and there the day where to do evangelism that's going to be his free day he never takes part as thy servants are busy here and there the business of the day is so important and it's more important than watching over the souls of the people he needs to bring to the lord and he needs to keep with the lord and the servant was busy here and there he was gone one sheep gone ten sheep gone two hundred gone the fellow is, you know, maybe has traveled uh, to where he wants to be. And then he's still answering, he's still overseer, he's still district pastor, he's still local church pastor. He's bearing the title, he's wearing the garment of the office, but it's not available. He's busy here and there. It says he was gone. You've lost families, they are gone. You've lost members, they are gone. They've strayed to other churches, they are gone. 
a backsliding they are gone and you've lost thousands of people they're gone and the king of Israel said unto him so shall thy judgment be thyself as decided each do you have the souls you were expected to make sure that it was saved it was secured they were sanctified they were steadfast and they remained in the kingdom are you keeping watch over them the cowardice of absent shepherds starving the sheep i come into the third one now the third one is the condemnation of assigned shepherds subverting the sheep subverting the sheep confusing the sheep and not allowing the sheep to be settled and stable and steadfast on sound doctrine that takes us to heaven those assigned shepherds that are not helping that are not supporting that are not strengthening the sheep but they are subverting the sheep great judgment will be upon them jeremiah chapter 23 in Jeremiah chapter 23, we're reading from verse 1. In Jeremiah chapter 23, reading from verse 1, will be to the pastors, shepherds, pastors, the same thing, pastors, leaders, the same thing, pastors, ministers, the same thing, will be to the pastors, will be to the shepherds, will be to the ministers, will be to the stewards and the servants that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture says the lord in verse 2 in verse 2 it says therefore thus says the lord god of israel against the pastors against the shepherds against the leaders and against the ministers that feed my people ye have scattered my flock <clears throat> and driven them away and have not visited them behold i will visit upon you the evil of your doings ministers shepherds pastors leaders i will visit upon you the evil of your doings says the lord look at verse um, we're looking there at verse 10 in verse 10 for the land is full of adulterers there are pastors for the land is full of adulterers there are shepherds for the land is full of adulterers there are preachers sugar-coated mouth and the great communicators and they preach and preach and preach and they excite the people all the same in spite of their preaching the land is full of adulterers for because of swearing the land mourns the pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up and their cause is evil and their force is not right their force is not right their force is not right they do not apply their force in the right direction to make sinners repent to make adulterers repent and to make sinners tremble under the mighty hand of god and to make sinners look into the future and see that the future is going to be terrible and dark for unbelievers for repentant sinners they do not apply their force in the right direction look at verse 11 in verse 11 for both prophet and priest are profane both preacher and pastors are profane and both shepherds and ministers are profane yea in mine house have i found their wickedness says the lord and then he tells us in verse 14 in verse 14 it says i have seen also in the prophets of jerusalem 
and horrible sin they commit adultery think about that shepherds pastors preachers you still answer the name and the title pastor they might even read the bible and preach what they count as sound doctrine but their lives do not match their preaching it says i have seen also the prophets of jerusalem i've seen in them a horrible thing they commit adultery they walk in lies you can't depend on their words they're hypocritical they are deceptive, they pretend, and they say this while they mean that. They are not dependable. They walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers that none doth return from his wickedness. Pastors, preachers, ministers, and then he says, they are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants of Gomorrah. Then he says in verse 15, in verse 15, therefore does says the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, concerning the pastors, concerning the preachers, concerning the shepherds, behold, I will feed them with warm wood and make them drink the water of gall for from the prophet of Jerusalem, the headquarters of Israel, his profaneness gone forth into all the land. The people in all the other cities and towns and villages in the nation, they count Jerusalem as the holy city, as the chief city, and whatever is coming from Jerusalem, they said that's acceptable, that's the standard, and yet lies, profanity, adultery, sinfulness, iniquity coming from that Jerusalem unto all the people and is gone forth into all the land. The Lord is telling us that there are sheep without shepherds and there are shepherds without sheep they do not have any presentation they go in to make before the Lord at the time of his coming now let's think let's think about the word and apply it to ourselves I'm sure you know this song must I go and empty handed does my Savior redeem and meet not one soul with which to greet him? Will you go and empty handed? Oh, the years is sinning wasted. Could I but recall them now? I will gladly give them unto my Lord, unto the Lord Jesus Christ, and gladly serve him. Oh, the years in sinning wasted. Oh, the years in slumbering wasted. Oh, the years in uh, being a sluggard. Oh, the, oh, the years in slumbering wasted. We waste our years when we don't pick up the word that the Lord Himself has given us. And then we reach out to the souls and we bring them into the kingdom. It's always looking at those souls that need to be saved. And if we are occupied in other things, I'm serving here, I'm serving there, and souls are not saved, and people do not come to the Lord, we're wasting our time of serving. All oh, the years is sinning wasted. Oh, the years is serving wasted. Sometimes we're silent and we're not giving the word. We see sinners sinning. We see backsliders backsliding and we're not reaching out to them. Oh, the years is silence wasted. Could die but recall them now. And there are times that we're just, um, you know, studying the people. We're not giving them the real word of God that will penetrate them, that will impact their lives, that will bring conviction upon them. All oh, the years in um, serving wasted. We think we're serving them, but we're studying them. And the Lord is bringing us back. He's saying we should have the mind of Christ. We should have the zeal of Christ and want to wake up sinners 
whether the sinners are in the church or the sinners are outside the church whether the backsliders have gone out of the visible church here or they're still in the local church reach out to those sinners reach out to those backsliders and bring them to conviction and bring them to pray and bring them to repent and bring them to, to call upon the name of the Lord we come to point number three now and it's the mandate of the shepherd to his servants the mandate the mandate he has given us we're looking at Matthew chapter 9 and we're reading from verse 37 Matthew chapter 9 we're reading from verse 37 it says in verse 37 then said he to his disciples then said he to his disciples his disciples at that time but you know the disciples of that time will not come back because they have gone they'll not come back from the grave they'll not come back from heaven and reach out to the harvest of today is talking to the disciples of today he says and then say he to his disciples the harvest truly is plenteous at this very time in our city here and in every city in our country and in every city in every country in our continent africa and in every city everywhere in the world the harvest truly is plenteous but the laborers are few not members of the choir the laborers are few it's not talking about ushers the laborers are few it's not talking about uh, those who are rearranging church and those who are rearranging furniture in the church it's talking about soul winners it's talking about those who will reach out to those on the harvest field the laborers are few and then in verse 38 it says pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest we we'll see three things here number one perceive the plenteous harvest on the field perceive look at that see that and gaze on it and keep on looking at it until it registered in your soul and then you're willing to do something rise up and do something perceive the plenteous harvest on the field point number two is to pray for passionate harvesters for the field pray for passionate harvesters for the field and point number three prepare with a pure heart to go forth prepare with a pure heart to go forth we're looking at number one perceive the plenteous harvest on the field in john chapter 4 reading from verse 35 john chapter 4 reading from verse 35 it says look on the field say ye not there are yet four months and then cometh the harvest behold i say unto you lift up your eyes and look on the fields for they are white already to harvest it says look up on the fields it's not saying look inward in the church it's saying look outside beyond the present disciples and beyond the present local church and beyond the present membership look out and look for and look up and will lift up your eyes and look on the fields for they are white already to harvest and then in verse 36 it tells us and he the trippeth receiveth which and gathereth fruit unto life eternal that both he that soweth and reapeth he that reapeth be rejoiced together look at verse 37 in verse 37 herein is that saying true one soweth and another reapeth verse 38 tells us I send you to reap I send you to reap you're not reaping saints you're not tripping members of the church you're not tripping those who are in the kingdom already is talking about go out to the field and the people that are on the harvest field and they are not yet saved go out i send you forth to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor 
other men labored and ye are entered into their labor why is second peter chapter 3 verse 9 second peter chapter 3 we're looking at verse 9 it says god in the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering towards what not willing that any shall perish talking about those who have not got saved not willing that any shall perish is talking about the harvest outside the church building not willing that any shall perish is talking about sinners who have not given their lives to christ who have not repented who have not turned away from their sins and who have not been reached into the kingdom they have not believed on the lord and if they continue like that they will perish but god is not willing that any shall perish but that all shall come to repentance Go forth therefore and bring them to repentance and bring them to faith in Christ. We're looking at point number two and is to pray for passionate investors for the field. Pray for passionate investors for the field. You see, pray ye therefore in Matthew chapter 9, verse 38. Pray ye therefore the Lord of harvest. And when you pray like that, you are praying to the Lord. He knows your heart. He knows how passionate you are, how sincere you are. He knows how real you are. He knows what your concern really is. He knows whether you are just praying just to fulfill all righteousness or you come with your heart, you come with your soul and you really pour out your soul before the Lord because you are concerned for the sinners who are perishing. You come with that kind of heart that is concerned for perishing souls and you pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Now, the Lord will know whether you are praying with sincerity or not. If the Lord then says in answer to your prayer and he picks on your husband and he says your husband to go to that field then if you recoil and say, uh -uh, why, do you, why is my husband, and you say, they are choosing my husband, you are not referring to God that you are praying to, who now peeked on your husband and said that that person will go to the harvest field, why my husband, or maybe you are, you know, an usher, and God picks up another usher there, and he says, now you go to that field and go and evangelize. Why did you remove an usher from us? We don't even have enough, and we're asking for more, and they have removed one usher. Your prayer was not sincere. Or maybe you are in the choir, and you pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that will send forth laborers into his harvest, and then one of the members of the choir, the Lord laid hands on him stop the singing and go forth into preaching the gospel and then you begin to divide things and destroy things and scatter things and begin to put things upside down your prayer was not sincere or maybe it's a group a pastor that is now i will pray that the lord will send forth laborers into the harvest and a group pastor you love him very much but god has a work for him to do and picks him up and go to the field and go and do the work why did they remove our group pastor your prayer was not sincere or maybe it's your region of us here or your state of us here pray ye therefore the lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest and will remove that region of us here or that state of us here go to the field you are needed there to bring souls into the kingdom you see many times when people pray they don't really pray with sincerity and their heart is not in their prayer 
but the Lord wants us to pray and the Lord wants the prayer to be sincere and the Lord wants us to be ready and willing should in case somebody you love somebody is near somebody you appreciate is the one that the Lord will send forth I pray that when that time comes it may even be today when that time comes we will show that our prayer is sincere in Jesus name I was waiting for headquarters. Amen. I come into Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, verse 2. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13. We're looking at verse 2. It says, And as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, they ministered to the Lord and fasted, they ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul. For the work whereunto I have called them are ah, two important ministers in the church at Antioch who are praying and praying and praying. If our prayer is sincere, if our prayer is genuine, the answer to the prayer to send forth laborers into his harvest field. Now Barnabas and Saul, very important in that church at Antioch, they have been sent forth. Where is their replacement? Who is standing in for them? Who is going to be doing their work? You know, when we complain like that, it means we don't know the might of God. But we're told in verse 4, look at verse 4 there, Acts chapter 13 verse 4. It tells us, so they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, they didn't waste time. They didn't say, okay, we'll pray about that. What are you praying about? The Lord has answered the prayer, he has sent forth, and so they went immediately and they departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. We're coming to the last point there, and that is prepare with a pure heart to go forth. Prepare with a pure heart to go forth. They prayed, they were told to pray at the end of Matthew chapter 9. Look at the beginning of chapter 10 now, Matthew chapter 10. We're reading from verse 1. It says, And when he had called his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits and to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. And then in verse 6, in verse 6, it says, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He sent them forth. They were to pray that the Lord of the harvest will send forth laborers into the harvest field. And then as they prayed, the answer to the prayer fell on them. The answer to the prayer called on them and they were sent forth. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, and as she go preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then in verse 8, he told them, Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely ye have received, and freely give. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, Jesus told them, in verse 16, Behold, I send you forth, I send you forth, Peter, don't ask Andrew, should I, should I not? I, Christ, I send you forth. And Peter, don't go and ask your wife at home. Well, I didn't expect this. I didn't tell you when I was leaving the house this morning. I've been praying because Jesus said we should pray that the Lord of the harvest will send forth laborers into the harvest field. And the Lord now is sending us forth. I will not be home for, you know, some days now. I don't know it might even take us some weeks. I don't know how long time it will take. He said we should go forth to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. My wife, what do you think? When Christ has called and when Christ has sent you forth, all the people, if they love you, if they are your very close friends or familiar people, they should be in agreement with you. Not, you are, not that you are asking them, should I obey Christ or not? When you gave your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, that was the covenant you made of the Lord. Whatever he says, I will do. Wherever he says, I will go. And now he's sending you forth. Behold, I send you forth. 
a sheep in the midst of wolves. He knew dangers might be there, difficulties might be there, challenges might be there. I'm sending you forth a sheep in the midst of wolves. That's not to give us excuse because the wolves are there and we cannot match them. We don't know what will happen when we get into the midst of those wolves. Why are we going to obey a commandment like that? We obey because he's Lord, he's Lord of our lives, he's Lord of our soul, he's Lord, Lord of our destiny, he's Lord of everything about us. That's what it means to call him Savior and to call him Lord. Behold, I send you forth a sheep in the midst of wolves, be ye therefore wise as serpents. Not that you are wise in your house, you are wise, you are wise on the field. Not you are wise in the local church and stay there. I'm wise. I know how to uh, make my way to remain in the local church when Christ has sent me forth. Be wise on the field. Be wise where He's sending you, and harmless as those. I pray. The Lord will give us the heart to be obedient in Jesus' name. Church, I said, I pray the Lord will give you the heart to be obedient in Jesus' name. Amen. Acts chapter 8, we're reading from verse 4. Acts chapter 8, we're reading from verse 4. It says, Therefore, they that was scattered abroad, that's what he wants. He doesn't want us to just, you know, stay there. I'm an usher here. I cannot preach the gospel. I cannot go and evangelize. I'm a member of the choir. I cannot go and evangelize. I'm a house fellowship leader. I cannot go and evangelize. You, you know what? Those who are state overseers now in Nigeria and some national overseers outside Nigeria Many of them were ushers in Lagos in the 70s. Many of them were members of the choir in the 70s. And some of them were kind of district pastors when we started the decentralization of the church in the 90s. But then when the call came upon them, go to that stage, that time as a state leader, go to that stage as a region overseer, go to that place. They all went. There were no questions. That's why now there are churches planted everywhere and the work of God is moving. That same commitment and that same zeal and that same passion and that same compassion of Christ we must have today. We must not plant ourselves uh, so rigidly in a locality at the headquarters or in any capital of any state anywhere that will say I cannot move. If they ever approach me and they say go here and go there that day I will leave the church. Ah, you had left already. Your heart is not with Christ you are backslider already but when you say with all your heart with all your soul when the call comes and when the privilege comes anywhere he wants i will do his will and then the grace of god will go with you the power of the lord will go with you and the strength of the almighty will go with you in jesus name therefore they that was scattered abroad went everywhere what were they doing tell me tell me what are you going to be doing as you go out now what are you going to be doing every day preaching the word let's rise up and make a commitment to the lord they that was scattered abroad went everywhere but preaching the word let's pray to the lord take whatever you have heard <clears throat> whatever you have learned take it to the Lord in prayer the Lord said pray so he wants to hear you pray he wants you to consider the condition of sheep without a shepherd He wants to consider the condition of your neighbors. The condition of people in your community. The 
condition of sinners. Nobody has spoken to you. You go to church. You belong to a denomination. You know them. You interact with them. You speak to them. But you know they have religion. You don't know what salvation is all about. Pray for the mind of Christ. Pray for that same heart that was in the Lord Jesus Christ that moved him with compassion when he saw the multitude. Don't just read the Bible without internalizing the word. And don't misinterpret the Bible, the words of Christ. Sincere. Let the Spirit of God bite the word to your heart. Let Him, the Lord Himself, bring up the passion, the zeal, the concern for sinners. Don't let your prayer be formality. Let it be real. Pray from your heart. You see sinners, and you are not moved. Pray that that deadness of soul, deadness of spirit. Deadness in your personality. Pray that the deadness in your inner man, that the Lord will bring life. Reality. Pray that the fire will burn from within. And from now on, when you see sinners, there will be something that will be stirred up in your heart. To want to reach out to them for the saving gospel. Knowledge brings light. Knowledge brings passion. Knowledge brings concern. Knowledge brings conviction. Knowledge brings consecration. If you have the knowledge in truth, if you have the knowledge in reality, have the passion in your soul. 
will be zeal in your life. The real, real child of God. If you are really saved by the Lord. And you hear the words of your Savior. It will stir up. The kind of compassion that Christ had. <clears throat> but if you hear the words of Christ. And you appear dead. Appear deaf. Blind. They appear the same as you were before. Something wrong. Your connection with Christ. Behold the confusion of the fearful sinners. And let passion, compassion, zeal, Rise up in your heart. I want to reach out to them. Know the concern of Christ. Let that concern be transferred into your heart. <coughs> You belong to Christ. If your relationship with Christ is still intact, have a feeling towards those who are perishing. Are you a leader? Are you a minister? Shepherd? You have sheep? Are you leading the people of God with cruelty? Scattering the sheep? Trampling on the sheep? Driving them here and there. No meekness. No gentleness. No consideration. For the feeling. Of the people you are leading. Those who scatter the sheep with cruelty cannot claim that they have the real heart of Christ. Are you a coward? Any little problem in the community? Any little unrest in the community? Run away and abandon the sheep? No courage, no confidence, no commitment to protect, preserve sheep of the fold. Remember the condemnation, shepherds who subvert the sheep, who lead the sheep astray, a false doctrine, a false interpretation, a false attitude, false action.
pray that you'll have a perception of Christ. That you'll see as he saw. You'll be moved like he was moved. You'll sacrifice. you do everything. That may even give you discomfort. Reaching out. Sheep. Taking care of them. Running after the backsliders. Bringing them back to Christ. Not just back to the church. Back to Christ. Leading backsliders to repentance, restoration, salvation. Let your prayer be with your heart. All sincerity, praying to the Lord of the harvest, that the Lord of the harvest sent forth laborers into his harvest field and be willing to go beyond service we are rendering now. Whatever that service is, be willing to sing forth by the Lord. Even if it's going to be a sheep, a mist of wolves. But you are willing, ready, bring the lost sheep. into the fold. <clears throat> Jesus name we pray. Yeah. Heavenly Father we thank you for the word. Very words of Christ. You are spoken to us tonight. The multitudes are still there. The sinners are still there. The sheep without a shepherd. Church members and church goers without repentance, without salvation. Many people, religious people, are still there in all our communities, everywhere, the places we come from, the places we live. Many people who might be religious, they know the name of Christ, but they have not repented, they have not come to the expiration knowledge of Jesus as Savior. You're sending us forth to them. We're praying, Lord, you'll grant us the passion, the compassion, the vision, the zeal, the mind, the heart of Christ in Jesus' name. We pray as we send others to us that told us the word of salvation and they were faithful and were repented. And we believed on you and we prayed until the Spirit of God bore witness in our hearts that we're children of God. Help us too to be as faithful as those people you sent to us to reach out to other people and lead them to real repentance and genuine salvation in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, the salvation of the people will not be just make-believe, it will be deep in their heart. They will pray and have something that is real until the Spirit of God will be a witness in their heart, the children of God, in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, to see backsliders around us, sinners in Zion, 
who are gambling with their spiritual lives and who are gambling with their souls help us lord to have compassion on them help us to be so zealous and to be bold enough courageous enough having conviction to reach out to those backsliders in the local church and bring them to real experience with christ in jesus name we pray, Lord, our lives will impact other people. Our lives will make other people to want to serve you. Not just serve you in choir, or not just serve you in, among the ushers, not just serve you in the local activities in the church, but serve you in reaching out to bring souls into the kingdom in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, to retain your word, to stand on your word, and to lay by your word, and to keep on praying, keep on praying, praying that investors and soul winners and evangelists will be sent forth to minister to souls and bring multitudes into the kingdom in Jesus' name. And we pray that you ask, you answer those prayers, and, you, and your hand reaches out to us personally, maybe to our wives, to our husbands, or to our friends, or to our neighbors, or to your workers around us, and you send them forth, will be in agreement, in total submission and surrender unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let there be a revival in our heart. Amen. Let there be a revival in every local church. Let there be a revival in the whole of deeper life in Jesus' name. Amen. And that original zeal and conviction for real evangelism on the field bring back to every heart in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray that none of us are the shepherds with no sheep. None of us will be workers with no resource. None of us will be pastors without any member. But that, Lord, the work of God will prosper in every one of our hands in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. As we go forth, we scatter abroad. Everywhere we go, we'll be preaching your word. And multitudes will be coming to the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Yeah.